Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of life and the opportunity to sit in your presence to study your word. Give us understanding and the ability to do your will. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Today's topic is God hates oppression. And we are taking our reading from Nehemiah chapter 5, from verse 1. Now the men and their wives raised a great outcry against their fellow Jews. Some were saying, We and our sons and daughters are numerous. In order for us to eat and stay alive, we must get grain. Others were saying, We are mortgaging our fields our vineyards and our homes to get grain during the famine. Still others were saying, we have had to borrow money to pay the king's tax on our fields and vineyards. Although we are of the same flesh and blood as our fellow Jews, and though our children are as good as theirs, yet we have to subject our sons and daughters to slavery. Some of our daughters have already been enslaved, but we are powerless because our fields and our vineyards belong to others. When I had this outcry and these charges, I was very angry. I pondered them in my mind and then accused the nobles and officials. I told them, you are charging your own people interest. So I called together a large meeting to deal with them and said, as far as possible, we have bought back our fellow Jews who we are sold to the Gentiles. Now you are selling your own people only for them to be sold back to us. They kept quiet because they could find nothing to say. So I continued, what you are doing is not right. Shouldn't you walk in the fear of our God to avoid the reproach of our Gentile enemies? I and my brothers and my men are also lending the people money and grain. But let us stop charging interest. Give back to them immediately their fields vineyards, olive groves, and houses, and also the interest you are charging them, 1% of the money, grain, new wine, and olive oil. We will give it back, they said, and we will not demand anything more from them. We will do so as you said. Then I summoned the priests and made the nobles and officials take an oath to do what they had promised. I also shook out the folds of my robe and said, in this way, may God shake out of their house and possessions anyone who does not keep this promise. So, may such a person be shaken out and emptied. At this, the whole assembly said, Amen, and praised the Lord. And the people did as they had promised. Beloved from our reading, and the topic of discussion, the main word there has to do with oppression. And a simple meaning of oppression is an act or instance of oppressing or subjecting to cruel or unjust impositions or restraints. The feeling of being heavily burdened, mentally or physically, by troubles, adverse conditions, anxiety. There are different types of oppression. We talk about violence, exploitation, marginalization, powerlessness, and cultural imperialism. Exploitation is the act of using people's labor to produce profit while not compensating them fairly. In the scripture that we read, it presented a theater of oppression especially violence, such that are very visible even in our Nigerian communities. 
especially those as the northeastern part of our country. During Nehemiah's days, his major efforts to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, he confronted a socio-economic crisis that had deep moral implications. Among the classes affected by this crisis were the landless, who were short of food, the landowners, who were compelled to mortgage their properties, those forced to borrow money at exorbitant interest rates and end up selling their children into slavery. What obtained then is not far-fetched from what we are experiencing in our own community. When you look at what is happening in the northeastern parts of this nation, the activities of the Boko Haram and the Fulani herdsmen are causing some of our citizens, making them to lose their possessions. They are no longer having access to their land and could not farm. And we know the danger that will pose to our community in future. We are bound to face famine. And if there is food insecurity in our land, I wonder what the people will do. And the fact behind this is that those who suffer most are the poor people who will have to be subjected to unjust and cruel acts of the oppressors. And there are people who are actually benefiting from such unjust acts. And these people are getting rich, taking undue advantage of the situation, and God is not happy with them. In our society, we talk about insecurity, talk about corruption, in the high places, injustices, and the most of it being spiritual bankruptcy because of lack of fear of God and lack of love and the activities of the spirit of mammon. We love money so much. Instead of money serving us, we are the ones serving money. And that has driven a lot of people into acts that God is not happy with them. Some do not have the vision of heaven. And in their own case, they feel that everything starts here and ends here. But for us Christians, we need to understand the brevity of life and so think of eternity. One should not envy the prosperity of the wicked because their end is terrible. We should also understand that there is judgment that will surely come at the end of our sojourning here, either being judged unto condemnation or unto commendation. My counsel will be that there is need for every Christian to be dead to sin and alive in Christ. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to rule our lives. If indeed we are Christians, we should submit ourselves to the dictates of our Maker because He has the final say. We know that after life there is judgment. Where will you spend eternity? In doing that which God hates, you know it will lead you to destruction. So I will encourage you as Christians to show forth yourself as light to this world, that people will see you and see those things that God loves. They will see you also and see those things that God hates. You have nothing to do with darkness. Oppression is darkness, and that should not be associated with you except you are not so sure of where we are going to. But I will encourage you to seek Christ, for he alone will bring you out of that kingdom of darkness where 
there is violence, there is exploitation, there is marginalization, and there are lots of things that ought not to be mentioned even among Christians. Think more of eternity. Think more of heaven. The decision is yours. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the word we have heard. Help us, Lord, to do exactly what you have taught us so that our life will continue to praise you. And at the end, we will all be with you in your kingdom in heaven. Thank you, Ancient of Days. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.